Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmosso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me directly, email tmosso at thewatchbox.com for pricing details. Today we are discussing the spectacular 2009 model year 500 piece limited edition titanium Blancpain 500 Fathoms GMT. This is a bigger, deeper diving 50 Fathoms, not only 1,000 meters water resistant, but with helium escape valve and a GMT function. It is big, 48 millimeters in diameter by 18.8 millimeters thick. It is 53.2 millimeters from lug to lug with a 24 millimeter spacing between the lugs. On my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, it actually sits secure. This is a little bit like those wartime Panerai watches, which are too big to look proportional on any wrist. So while a truly huge wrist, let's say 20 centimeters circumference, might wear this proportionally, for everyone else, the question isn't going to be, does it look goofy and large, but does it sit securely? As an instrument watch designed to be seen in every sense, yes. It sits securely and you can read it easily. And as you can see, it's not as absurd as you might think. Again, I'm just a 16 centimeter circumference wrist. And while it's obviously pushing out to the edge of my wrist, here's the down the barrel shot, here's the cuff shot. Nevertheless, I could actually pull this off. I could wear this and enjoy it. It's mostly sapphire and titanium and rubber, so very, very light. Now here we have a strap that features plenty of ventilation, ducts, 500 Fathoms branding. It is model specific, matte finish, a uh, little bit of a chiseling on the profiles. And then on the underside, you can see these little striations to better aggress against the wrist and hold it in place. We have a 500 Fathoms specific titanium pin buckle. And then the case is fairly muted, in good taste for such a large watch. We have satination on all the profiles. We have the helium escape valve for you saturation divers. When the helium inside the watch exceeds external pressure by 2 to 3 bar, this opens, releases that helium, avoids blowing out your seals and your sapphires. Screw down crown, Blancpain branded, small crown guard profiles. We have a unidirectional rotating 120 click dive bezel. That might be the most refined dive bezel I've ever encountered. If you want a super meaty clatter, this isn't that. This is much more like what you get on a Cartier or a Grand Seiko diver. A super smooth glide, but it is 120 clicks, so you can place it very, very precisely against the minute hand. Now, as with most modern mainline 50 Fathoms models, not the bathyscaphs, but the others. We have here a lovely cambered sapphire over the bezel. That helps prevent scratches, but it also protects the luminescence underneath, so the entirety of this bezel can be loomed, and it is spectacular. Take note, we have all four hands loomed, and because the bezel is fully loomed, it's very easy to set it and then read it relative to the minute hand. A super upscale look. This is the Close Encounters watch. Now, the dial. Applied, individual, tri-Arabic numerals. But if you look, there's a grill that incorporates the indices, but they're all monoblock with a ring at center. So this is, properly speaking, not a bunch of individual indices, but a grill that forms the index points and also the frame for the date. Now, there is a second time zone on this 500 Fathoms GMT. You may as well fire it up. It features hacking seconds, rest assured, and I'm sure I'll be able to demonstrate that once I get it wound. I can stop that seconds hand. I also have the ability to make my local time zone changes. I can jump the date forward or backwards, depending on whether I'm traveling east or west. When the watch is in hacking mode, that second time zone moves along, and it's in a 24-hour format, so that second time zone hand makes one circuit of the dial every 24 hours, so it's intuitive to read AM or PM in the remote time zone, the time zone where you are not. And yes, I know that that conversion there is not exact, but that's just the way we do in the watch industry. On the reverse side, a spectacular white gold rotor here with the image of an engine turned ship's propeller. It's beveled on its sides, then you can see it's actually been divot drilled around the 500 fathom script to look like cavitation on the edge of the blades. Underneath, we have a three mainspring barrel automatic movement with a five day power reserve. It's the caliber 5212. It beats weight at four hertz 
ports with the three barrels in series, you have a nice even torque release. So even when fully wound, it's not going to gallop and gain a lot of time. And even when down to 36 or 24 hours of power, it's not going to lose a lot of amplitude and lose a lot of time. It does have the split 12 and 24 hour time functions. It's adjusted in five positions, which is the high horology and chronometer standard. It features a free sprung balance for greater shock tolerance and precise adjustment, 35 pivot joules. We'll take a look at some of the finishing here. There's a sort of snailed pattern across the bridges. It's the same as you'd find on the underlying movement, which is the 1315. Solarization and black polish on the ratchet wheel. There are lovely polished jewel sinks. The bevels on the bridges are really quite admirable for a series-produced watch and a series-produced movement. This is about as nice as bevels get. You can see they're deeply rounded, drawn, and mirrored, which is just a good look. There is some engine turning on the base plate. The screw heads are black polished, and the wheels, with the exception of the ratchet wheel, have been satinated. The ratchet wheel is solarized. Just a fantastic looking watch. Beautifully finished inside, and surprisingly wearable on the outside. Reach out to Team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. One more detail, because details matter. You could see that bars and hex screws are used to fix the strap to the case. This is a much more secure arrangement than spring bars for a whole host of reasons. It's also more expensive to implement, which is why I'm glad to see it here on this heavy and expensive watch.